That was a good time up in Poconos, man. It really was. That was some bad weather, though. You know, the wind went right through you. All right, all right. Don't get your femurs in a bunch. We're not here to talk about human anatomy. In this video, we're going to talk about turtle anatomy. This is a red foot tortoise, which is a turtle, because as we've learned in old videos, all tortoises are turtles. We're here to talk about the basics first and foremost, the parts of a turtle. You've got the head, the front limbs, the rear limbs, the tail, and you've got the shell that encompasses this animal, which is basically made of two main parts, the top shell, carapace, and bottom shell, plastron. Turtles are virtually unchanged since the time of the dinosaurs, so you're literally looking at a primitive animal here. And when you think about it, what reason do they need to change? They are encompassed by something that can truly protect them from a lot of things. A turtle shell is a work of art, and they do not grow out of their shells. You'd be surprised at how many people compare them to hermit crabs. Turtles do not leave their shells. Their shells grow with them. They start off as cartilage, and then they turn to solid bone. Since turtles are reptiles being cold-blooded and they are ectothermic, that means that they rely on external sources to regulate their body temperatures, and the shell enables them to do that, in some cases, rather quickly. They will bask in the sun, whether they're an aquatic species or terrestrial, and they will absorb that precious heat from the sun. In the case of some aquatic turtles, for example, alligator snapping turtles, soft-shell turtles, mata-mata turtles, they will rarely ever leave the water. So, to make themselves warmer, they'll actually move themselves closer to the surface of the water where the sun's rays come through and can still warm them up. So, they don't actually have to leave and go onto a log to bask if they don't want to. So this right here is the top shell, the carapace, the trait that a turtle is most well known for. Now what you're going to notice right off the bat here is this red foot tortoise's scoots, which are the individual squares on a turtle's shell or plates, are raised. That's because she was raised inadequately. She was probably raised in an environment that was way too dry before we got her, which caused the keratin scoots to pyramid. Typically, when you look at the bone underneath that layer of keratin, you will see that the shell itself is still smooth the way it's supposed to be. These animals are not supposed to grow this way, but luckily for them, usually it's only cosmetic. So what I want you to see is what's underneath this layer of keratin. Okay, so we have the exact same species here, only this one unfortunately has passed on a long time ago. This old red foot tortoise displays the two main parts of the shell. The scoots right here that pop off because the animal is gone, and underneath it is solid bone. One of the most common misconceptions with a turtle shell is people thinking that it's an exoskeleton, but it actually is not. People will say that's literally the definition of an exoskeleton. That's not the case. And why? Well, because an exoskeleton is on an invertebrate. These are vertebrates. The shell of a turtle is part of the vertebral column, and it is actually a modified rib cage. So what's happening here is down the center is the spine, and I'm going to show you it from the inside, and all around it here are actually the animal's ribs. The turtle's origin. I just all right, so these are two great examples for what I want to show you. These are box turtles. This one right here is a Gulf Coast box turtle. This one is an Eastern box turtle. This one has been gone for so long that it was actually found in Florida, basically fossilized already. But they both show us something really awesome. On the inside there, right along the midline, you can see the turtle's spine. Isn't that incredible? And then if you look close enough, especially with this younger animal here, you can see that this is the rib cage. These are all the ribs here coming right off. It's incredible stuff. This animal has a spine that is literally fused in there. It's not going anywhere. So now you can see why a turtle absolutely cannot leave its shell. It is literally and figuratively its spine. So what about pancake tortoises and soft shell turtles? Well, soft shell turtles have a leathery skin over the bony plate of the shell, but they still have a spine and they still have a rib cage. So do pancake tortoises. Now they have the keratin scoots and the bone underneath that does exhibit the spine as well as the modified rib cage, but they are pliable. Their shells are not as hardened as some other species, even though parts of it are in fact bone. You'll especially notice that on the plastron. So when you look at the bottom of a pancake tortoise, you'll see right there, see how pliable that is? It's almost 
as though it would be squishy, right? A lot of people mistaken that for shell rot. That's not shell rot. That is the perfect evolution of this animal. This animal, because its shell is not as hard, has evolved to be able to expand its lungs, which then expands the entire body so it can stay jammed inside a tight rock crevice, which makes it nearly impossible for a predator to remove it. The structure of a turtle's shell varies from species to species and it also goes with its habitat preferences. So tortoises, with the exception of the pancake tortoise, are typically going to be more highly domed, whereas something like a soft shell turtle or a painted turtle or even a slider are going to be flatter. They need to be able to streamline through the water. Think of a submarine. They have to be able to move quickly in an environment that is fully aquatic. Regardless, no matter what the shell is designed to look like as far as shape goes, if you will, they all possess the same traits. And right here, we have a marginated tortoise and we have a box turtle. These are the shells of animals that have left these gifts behind for us to learn from. So you will notice, even though this animal still has some of its scoots that actually are where the pattern that the animal uses to blend in with its environment are found, you will see that once the keratin scoots come off, there is bone. This animal has lost all of its scoots, but you can can see two different things. You can see the bony plates and where the seams for those are, as well as the seams for each individual scoots. So what are the scoots called? The ones that go down the spine here, one, two, three, four, five, are the vertebral scoots. Makes sense because the vertebrae are right underneath there. The four on each side of the spine are the coastal scoots. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, those are your coastals. The back plate here, that is your supercaudal shield. The small scoot up front here, which is found in most species, but not all, is the nuchal scoot. And then the ones all around the edge are called the marginal scoots. On the plastron, which is the bottom shell, we also have scoots. And they are named guler, humeral, pectoral, abdominal, femoral, and anal. And just like on the carapace, when the keratin scoots are removed, underneath is solid bone. As if things couldn't get any weirder, here are two freshwater turtle species that look nothing alike. In this hand, I have the northern red belly turtle. Now this aquatic turtle is designed to be able to move fast in very deep water. It has an oval, flatter shell, very powerful limbs, and its feet are basically like paddles being heavily webbed. And they are also avid baskers. So even though they spend at least 90% of their time in the water, they will take any chance they can to haul themselves out onto logs and rocks and bask but when something spooks them, they are able to literally launch themselves into the water and swim away at lightning speed. The Mata Mata turtle is totally different. This animal uses an extreme method of camouflage to evade predation. They are designed to look like a log or leaves at the bottom of the water. They're not good swimmers. They don't occur in deep water typically and like shallow water where they will ambush their prey. They sit there and they use that snorkel nose to get air from the very surface of the water, but otherwise they stay motionless. An unsuspecting fish comes by and then boom, the turtle uses a suctioning method to suck in the fish and then that is that. Another important trait of turtles and tortoises are their powerful claws. Whether it's turtle, tortoise, or terrapin, they all have powerful nails on all four feet. And when it comes to tortoises, they have more elephantine feet with nails that are used to dig burrows or scrapes and also tear vegetation apart. When it comes to turtles, they will have sharp claws, except for, of course, your sea turtles that have flippers. Right here is one of the main ways you can separate box turtles from tortoises, and that's because they have partially webbed feet and they have sharp claws. See that? Very sharp claws, in fact, and they will use those to tear apart both animal and plant matter. When you compare the feet of turtles and tortoises, you can really see the difference, and of course, tortoises have no webbing at all. There are many traits that we can discuss when it comes to these incredible animals, but one other thing that's worth noting is the presence of the cloaca on a turtle or tortoise. Now, what is a cloaca? Well, it is a common cavity that's at the end of the digestive tract where both waste and genital products are released. So not to get too graphic for you guys, this little area right here, this little opening in the tail is where everything comes out of. It's what they use to breed, it's what they use to poop and pee, and it's also where the eggs of the female come out. 
So, no matter the age of a turtle or tortoise, you are usually not going to see its genitals outside of the cloaca, except in some cases like when they are soaking or of course actively breeding. Once they reach a certain age, there are certain external characteristics that help set male and female apart. That's not what this video is about. So what do we do when it comes to a young animal like this? This is a juvenile Galapagos tortoise that has many, many years ahead of it before we are going to even be able to guess if it's male or female. And that's because all young turtles and tortoises look like females. So what veterinarians will actually do with younger animals like this is they will perform a surgical procedure called endoscopy and they will go in through the cloaca, usually with a little tiny camera, I believe, and they'll be able to look at the genitals internally to determine if the animal is male or female. But other than that, you absolutely cannot tell the gender of a young turtle or tortoise until it starts reaching that pivotal age or size where it shows the external sexual characteristics. Turtles and tortoises have powerful beaks, see that? They don't have teeth, but the beak is sharp and in some cases serrated. And what it actually does is it allows them to either tear apart vegetation easily, cut right into it, or if they are more carnivorous, it helps them tear apart animal matter. Or in the case of certain aquatic turtle species that will go after fish, once they grab the fish, they use both their sharp nails and sharp beaks to just tear the fish into a million pieces. There are over 330 species of turtle on our planet today, each unique in its own way, but they've all evolved similar traits. So whether it's a Burmese star tortoise, a Galapagos tortoise, an Egyptian tortoise, pancake tortoise, Mata Mata, box turtle, diamondback terrapin, sea turtle, or red belly turtle, they all carry that amazing shell that we've grown to love. And what captivated us in the beginning. So if you guys wanna see us do more videos about the anatomy of turtles and tortoises, or maybe just the history behind them, let us know in the comments. Hey, why didn't the skeleton rob the bank? Because he didn't have the guts to do it. <laughs> Dude, that doesn't bother you? I guess nothing gets under your skin. <laughs>